Hi everyone, welcome back to Plum Mashable. So for today's video, we're gonna be making Christmas cards with foil. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, I feel like the mink is probably the most underutilized machine. Oh, hold on, no, maybe my portrait, but it's very close. I'm funny with foil because I have the expectation that it's going to be good and sometimes it's not. And that's just the way that it kind of is with the foil. Um, I guess if you go into it not expecting it to be perfect, you'll feel much better about this. But I have had some practices recently and they've turned out rather well. So let's just see how we go. So what I'm going to do today is I have three different styles, two different kinds, but three different styles um, of ways that we're going to use foil to make a couple of Christmas cards. So I have pre-done my backgrounds, but we're going to foil them together. So the first one is this image style one. Now I downloaded these images off the internet, uh, off Etsy, sorry. The store is called Point and Poem and I will link the exact listing down below so you can go and check it out. These are all single images. I've put them together on um, a page in Photoshop, printed them and printed them out. This is obviously using a laser printer because you need the toner ink to react with the foil. The second one I did was just this word kind of one. Both of these backgrounds are obviously going to be a little bit busy and that's absolutely fine in the way I want to do things. Um, just print, just again put into Photoshop, copy to paste, copy to paste, copy to paste to get this kind of background and we'll play with it in just a sec. And the other ones I've done are these. These are using, put it away, silly me, the Heidi Swap texture paste. This will react with the foil as well. So there's a bit of texture here, it's a lot of fun, it feels amazing. I really love the way, especially this dot one feels. So this is the, this one is a Kayser Craft st um, stencil. I pre-did all of this so that I didn't have to spend all the time doing it on camera because it does take a lot of time. Um, this one is the, the Kayser Craft Dotty stencil. I will of course find it down below and link it. Uh, and this one is actually one that I made myself. This is using, it's just using Cricut Design Space. I think I've got the file still. If I do, I will link it down below and you guys can check it out on Design Space. But it's basically just, it's a six by six uh, square and I've just put lines in it to make different widths. I've actually done it with a bunch of different widths of lines so that I can play with a bunch of different ones. And that's what you get when you put the texture paste through and let it dry. Um, obviously you don't get the dog hair. The dog hair is a bonus that just comes with living in my house, but you get the gist. So I think we'll start off with the texture paste ones. I've got some gold and silver foil here. I'm leaning towards the gold. I'm leaning towards the gold. I don't know why I'm in a real gold phase at the moment. I have done these in gold and silver and gold tends to look better. I've also grabbed some Distress Oxide inks that we're gonna use for this. And I think the gold will look better with these colors. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut out so we're going to cut out some of this foil. I do find that cutting this is a little bit difficult sometimes, but I think I'll be fine. So I'm just going to cut this out. Once you get going, you can do this. I'm going to see if I can use... Whoops, it's got some red on it. That's all right. Might need to cut two, two bits for my two things here. Oh, that one's fine. That one's not going to cover the whole thing. So you can use bits and pieces to, to do the whole thing. Just for the sake of you guys today in this video, I'm just going to do it as one solid bit. But just know you can layer them up. And I'll probably do that in the next, next example. Never had foil cut so nicely for me. It didn't cut straight, but it cut easily. All right, so once those are cut out and we've got them covered, we're gonna fire up the mink. I'm just gonna rub these in. With the texture paste, it does stick a little bit. Not a lot, but a little bit, which means it holds it in place, which is really nice. So I'm going to fire up the mink. We're gonna run this through and I'll come back and show you the, the foiled product. And then we're gonna go ahead and make these into some cards. Okay, so just for anyone that's playing along at home, I did that on setting number four uh, on the mink. I find with the texture paste it doesn't need to be quite as hot. Uh, and I've run it through using my uh, mink, uh, what do you call these, protective pockets 
thing. Um, I have, now I need to say thank you to someone, and I'm really sorry, I can't find the comment right now. Um, someone suggested that I use acetone to clean this, which is just nail polish remover. Make sure you get the, obviously not acetone one. Um, and I found that actually really worked. So I need to spend an afternoon cleaning off all the icky ink off my other sheets. Uh, but I tried it on that one and it worked really well. All right, so now we've got our texture paste with our little gold foil. How good does that look? And it does. I find this texture paste works really well. It gives you such a lovely shine. So I'll put that over there. You can use that on something else if you wanted it to. I, I haven't tried it yet, but I know you can. And there's our second one. So we've got a little bit of a mess up the top, but generally speaking, that's pretty good. So from here, what we're going to do is we're going to cut these into little ball balls. So I'm just going to grab my Hero Arts Infinity dies. And this way you can do these in any kind of, any size you like. You could do a really big ball ball. You could do little ball balls. I think for me, depending on how many of these I get, and I found I got nine out of this last time. I'm going to try and get a couple more out of each sheet this time, but there's a couple of spots that that may be harder. This was sort of the size that I wanted. Um, where's my ruler? I'll tell you how big these ones are. These are the, it's going to cut about a 3.7 centimeter circle. Uh, and in inches for anyone playing along, that's about a one and a half inch circle. I'm happy with that size, but you could go one up and that would work as well. I'm happy just to do it in this all the same size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click to it because this is obviously going to take a while. I'm going to cut out all these circles, see how many I can get from each sheet, and then we're going to go ahead and colour them in. All right, so I've got them all cut out. I've got nine from each. I do have a little bit of space still at the, the top and the bottom. Um, now, something that I tried to do, so I find when I run this through with texture paste, I lose a little bit of that really slick, shiny, kind of thing that I want, which I don't mind. It's it's not a horrible thing that I lose. Um, so you'll sort of see when you see a real close up of these that there's a little bit of texture because of my cutting plates. I tried to put like a piece of cardstock through to kind of protect it and actually dulled it even more. So my, my advice there is make sure you try to just use your plates. But if you can use a brand new cutting plate, you're gonna sort of protect it from that dulling down. Um, and maybe a little bit of texture but like I said I don't really mind all that much other side note you could use a cover plate die if you have one I have a uniquely creative one that would cut out nine circles in one pass but they're a little bit small for what I wanted to do and they also give the stitching which I didn't want for this project so if you do have a cover plate die that will cut out um, a lot of circles at once feel free to use that here as well um, or if you want to use other shaped ornaments you don't have to use circles you could use ovals or ornament shapes if you've got them but anyway, all right, so what I'm going to do is I want to have four ornaments on each card. I'm going to make two, so I'm going to just cut, pick out some of the ones that I like the best. They're going to be exactly the same card. They're just going to be, um, the colors will be rotated, not that one. So I've got here some Distress Oxide. I've got Peeled Paint, Rustic Wilderness, Candied Apple and Festive Berries. And I've also got my new fo domed foam blending tool. I just want to give these a go more than anything else. Um, so I'm going to color in one of each of these in each of the colors. So I'll do fe two Festive Berries, two Candied Apple, etc., etc. Um, and then we can start putting the card together. The reason I'm using the foam instead of my blending tool is I want these to be really darkly colored anyway. So I figure why not give these a shot? So I'll just I'll just use like one domed foam for each of the red ones. I think that's okay. So I'm just dabbing that on. Don't I'm not really using it to blend, so I'm not really seeing any difference with how I'm putting that on. But it is a nicer coverage. Um, and don't worry at all about going over the. Um, oh dear, the foil because we'll clean that off in just a sec. So I'm just dabbing this on. I want it to be thick, so it's okay if it's not really nice. You can, of course, put blended colors on here if you wanted to, but I'm quite happy with the uh, single colors. So just to show you, and then I'll run off and do the rest of them off camera. So you can see they've got this little bit of a dull thing happening here with the 
with the foil and I will do a zoom here so you can see really closely. So that's basically just the ink sitting on top of the of the foil but when we wipe it with a cloth and I'll try and get a zoom of sort of before and after so you can kind of see both. You can sort of see there on the left that the, it still looks a little bit duller. It looks like there's ink still sitting on the top whereas on the right it's it's obviously clean so it's much nicer. And that's just that resist kind of thing that happens with um, like embossing powders or anything like that this is the exact same thing it will resist the ink uh, on top of the, the foil so I'm gonna go ahead and do all the other ones in the other colors and I'll be right back okay first impressions of the domed foam is that they feel a lot smoother so I feel like they they slip over the page or over your, your project a little bit easier than the other foam which I always used to find got stuck a little bit um, Obviously I'm using it for the most simple of tasks for this, but I, so far, I really like the domed foam. I will do a video, can't promise it'll be before the end of the year, but I will do a video sort of comparing the, the domed foam to the, um, domed foam to the regular foam to the blending brushes and just sort of see how they all go. Um, just a little note, don't wipe the ink off. Don't wipe the ink off of the green one and then come back to the red one because there will be a little bit of transfer, not a lot because you are just buffing, but I found there was a little bit of green on there. I like the differences in the green, that's that's cool. Um, now I got my colour palette off Google. I did have a look on the Sarah Jane, not Sarah Jane, Sarah Renee Clark one um, and I couldn't quite find a palette that I liked so I just Googled it. Uh, and I got a bunch of others. So from here I'm just grabbing a piece of A5 cardstock which is basically just an A4 cut in half so this is a card front basically speaking uh, and I'm just going to cut this in half again. Now I always struggle with this I can never find exactly where half is even though I know where it is. When in doubt measure it out. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt measure it out so this is just a, an actual card base I've just grabbed it and then if I cut the cardstock to that size I know that it'll be right now that said this doesn't feel 100% right so I'm just gonna cut myself another bit of A5 because I know I get this right because my measurements right and we'll use all four of these anyway by the end of this video so it'll be fine that's better okay so then we're going to sort of arrange these to be hanging down and I'm going to have them sitting. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to use all four. I may only use three. But I'm just going to have them sort of hanging down the side here. These are going to be very, very, very clean and simple cards. So you've got one there. I'll bring in the red dots for this one. So we'll do stripey. Stripey and dots. Yeah, three looks better. It is true what they say. The the three, the rule of three sometimes is just nicer. So I'm gonna have this one sitting down a little bit lower. Like I said, these are gonna be two cards that are basically the same. Hold on, let's see what the four might work. Let's do one as a four and one as a three and see how see how we go. Alright, this one I'm gonna actually I'm gonna do this one a little bit different. So I'm gonna have I don't know, four just looks a bit weird. It should be five. It should be five. So we'll, we'll have five. We'll just sort of do it a bit different. So I'm have that sitting like that. I want the overlap just a little bit, just to, and some of these will be up on foam tape, so it'll look a bit better. So if we have it like that and then like that, no. uh, let's we'll have it this way instead. And then we can put the Merry Christmas at the bottom and then this one we'll put a Merry Christmas on the side. So that's where the sentiments are going to go. So I'm going to grab some glue and some foam tape. So for one I'm going to use Offset Sayings Christmas and the other one I'm going to use Joy to All. And I'm going to bring some gold in here as well. So we're going to use some embossing powders. Do this one first.
happy with where that's sitting. I'm just going to check where the ball balls are sitting because I don't want them to be in the wrong spot now. No, that's fine. I'm actually going to bring them just a little bit lower. Just don't want the three, like the two green ones sitting like on straight on top of each other. It's got to be the three. So might need to move this up just a little bit. So the easiest way for me to do that, oh, I've messed it up now anyway, so it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to have that sit there, there. Okay. That's where I want those. I'm sure of that. So we'll get the... I'm happy. So pick that up. I can move these off now because I don't need them. Well, I do, but you know what I mean. A bit of powder on here so that we don't get too much static. I'm just going to go ahead and stamp this out with my Versamark ink. I tried to keep that as as less what's the word I'm looking for I didn't want to warp it as much as I possibly could all right so I'm gonna have green green and red that's gonna be just making sure that nothing else is there I've got a, I'll get a sand eraser in a minute to just wipe off those little dots so I want the green one at the bottom to actually be the one that's up a bit higher. I'm actually going to use three levels for this one. So I've got two different heights of foam tape here. So I'm going to have the green at the bottom be the highest, then the red, then the green one at the bottom is going to be the one that's sort of more, that's going to be flat, sorry. Uh, you can obviously do this with, if you didn't want to use foam tape, you can hold these up with different length um, amounts of other cardstock like you could cut some of the circles out of some extras and just have those instead so you could have like three layers of three layers behind one two layers behind the other and then none behind the other or you know what I mean but cardstock actually works just as well in fact sometimes I think it works better but for this one we're going to use foam tape I'm just trying to make it as solid behind here as it can so that when it does go through the mail if it goes through the mail, um, it doesn't crinkle or get flattened too much. Okay. So that's now dry. So I'm just grabbing my sand eraser really quick. It's just a little spot here that I'm not particularly happy about. It will be fine if I can't get it off. That's done a reasonably good job of it, so it'll be fine. All right, so we're gonna put the green one down first. So just normal glue on this one. Can use glue tape, of course, but today we're gonna use this. I'm gonna grab my tweezers out too, because that will help me. Couldn't find them, got them in the end. So put the green one down first, just leaving a little bit of room at the side. And we'll come in with this red one. Now I may need to take some off the other green, because it'll sit over the top of this one anyway. So to finish it off, I'm grabbing a very skinny um, nibbed pen. So this is a 0.2 uni pin. And I'm just going to draw in the strings and I want these to be, I want to say not quite perfect, like I want them to look hand drawn, that's the point. So skinny little things going up, I'm going to do three. It's not my favourite, 
but I'm getting what I want. I'm going to do this, the other one in the exact same way that we're going to have the five. So we'll have yeah, red, green, red, green, red, green, red at the top, green at the bottom. Um, the green's going to be up on foam tape, the red's going to be flat. And then I'm going to have um, just in black ink this time. May all your Christmas wishes come true. This is from Joy to All uh, at the bottom. So I'm going to head and do that and put it all together and I'll be right back. And then just to finish these two off, I just feel like I need a couple of other little bits. So these are Nouveau Drops. This is bright gold. Um, I'm just going to do a tester on a bit of other cardboard first. Just to make sure I've got my drops. The air's all out of the drops. There you go. It's not too many, but just a couple sort of around the page. I'm really not good at this yet, but I will get there. I know you flick it on the back to make them sit flat, so I'll do that in just a sec. So there we have the first one using the foil, um, the texture foil. I know that took a long time, but I really, I love both of those. I think they look really cool. This is just another one that I did. Um, same exactly the same way I just did them in rainbow instead of the um, instead of the Christmas colors I think either all work honestly um, but I, I like the Christmas colors I just don't think I picked the right Christmas colors but that's okay all right moving on to these other ones I'm gonna foil I'm gonna do them in quarters because I want a red a green a gold and a silver of each so I'm gonna put I've got some red and some green this is actually deco foil, it's not Heidi Swap foil. I just grabbed some off my friend Denise. So I'm just gonna use the card base I stuffed up before. And if I cut it just a little bit bigger than that card base, then I know I'm sort of a quarter. And I'll do that with all of the colors. I just, if I can save some of this red, I will, because I don't have red, so why not? I'm gonna go ahead and cut all these and run them through the mink, and we'll come back and we'll see what we get. All right, so I've got my foiled pieces through. Just in case anyone's interested, I printed that out on just plain white cardstock. I think it's 200 GSM. Um, it goes through my laser printer fine, so that was where we went. Um, and obviously I've crossed some of these over, so that's absolutely fine. We might get some cool gradient things happening. So there's the gold. It's not too bad. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. There's the green. The green I think is a bit better. Yes, the green's good. And it could be that this, the gold wasn't pushed down far enough. That's fine. The silver's really good. And then let's have a look at this red. <gasps> oh, that's cool. Okay, I'm going to have to get some. And I love, there's a couple of um, gradients in the middle that we might be able to do something with. Uh, and then when it comes to the words, so we've got the, the silver. Has worked mostly there's a little spot in the middle but that's fine the gold is pretty good is actually uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with most of these 
the green is lovely the green is lovely and then the red okay this is just something I'm noticing which I've never noticed before because I don't think I've ever used um, deco foil and Heidi swap at the same time the Heidi swap foil doesn't stick down as well the the deco foil really does so that's just a something I've noticed so there we go so now we're gonna make a bunch of cards quickly I hope um, using using these as backgrounds so I'm just gonna trim off any of the the excess on the top so all the just the white stuff around the edges and then I'm gonna cut it sort of in the middle there where I see the color change doesn't have to be perfect and these will all probably be a little bit smaller in the end anyway and I can just trim off any of the the excess color I think for this this lot of cards we'll just do single colors and then for maybe future ones we might play with some of the others so I'm just then looking at that and just checking that that's yep all red this one's got a little bit of the red and the silver on the side, so I'm just going to fix those up. So some of these might end up a bit smaller, but that's okay. Alright, so I've got my bunch of panels here. Some of these are going to be very, 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 very simple. Some of them may be a little bit more complicated. I'm going to pull in some of the Luscious Labels uh, sentiments. This is where this is going to be so much fun because it's going to be so simple. So, the, especially these ones with the just the panels, these are going to be the super, super easy ones. I was just going through and getting a bunch of my card bases ready to go here. So, some of these are not very good card bases. They're Kmart ones and not folded nicely. So, those ones I shall fix. But, that'll be fine. So, this one with the green. That just looks lovely, like almost completely on its own. So, oh, I love that. And stick that down and then have a really simple, so I've got black ones and I've got white ones and these can be foiled as well. So especially for the, the like these ones, the, the simple ones, I think having something on here that's foiled maybe look really cool oh okay so this is where I'm gonna use some of that other foil from so I'm gonna have a green one here this silver one this is where I'm gonna pull in some of the Jennifer Maguire tricks that she does with her panels so I'm gonna go ahead and make all these up and then come back and show you all of the finished products okay so I didn't end up using the silver and the gold but I can put that in my to use later pile and that's absolutely fine um, I, I love the other ones and obviously and this was taking too long so anyway this was the first one we did I put them all now on card bases so that's the first one we just got the little ball ball just sitting over the side which actually I think looks really cool got the second one as well with that um, textured foil on there I really love the Nuvo drops around the edge as well and then these are all the ones that I just made so this was the one using the red words Simple die cut, that's a Kiki K one. Simple sentiment, a little bit of black around the sides just to kind of join it all together. Simple, but very, very spectacular. I actually like this one the best out of all of the words ones. And I thought that maybe the, the words on the bottom would be too much, but there's something about just having it down there on the bottom with that black line. It just, it's very simple, but works. It's horrible. This one may be my favorite out of these ones. Um, and even then, the gold's not perfect, but it, it does look lovely. I love that little corner thing. I need to use that trick more often. Got this one uh, with the silver. I really like this one too. This, all I did was I put through, and I'll put in a picture because I, I didn't want to do it in the middle of this. It's probably the best. I, I just print out like a plain square or rectangle and foil it. And if I get a good, if it gets good, it gets good. Otherwise, sometimes it gets a bit sort of scrunchy. This is probably the best, um, full square of toner ink that I've ever print like ever foiled it worked beautifully and I just think that looks really cool 
And then you've got two really simple ones with just the background, no black and the full foil of the, of the sentiments. How good do they look in the red and the green? I love it. I love it. So there we go. None of these cards are particularly complicated. And I reckon, I don't know how long I've been sitting here, but like to make this many Christmas cards in a couple of, in one sitting, I think is really good. And, and you could easily make a whole set like this. Um, if you print it all like the same color maybe, and then like, sorry, not print all the same, but foiled in the same color. You could just cut them up and make it really, really simple. But I, I absolutely love these. I'm leaning, I thought I would lean towards these ones with the texture paste. I'm actually leaning towards these ones. So simple, so stunning. Um, and I, I really, really love these. So I hope this gives you some ideas on different ways or more ways you can use your foil stash. If you're like me, you've got a whole drawer full of it. I may need to now go and get some red and some green because I don't have any. Um, but yeah, foil, foil's fun for Christmas. So that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching. Please give it a thumbs up if you did enjoy it and make sure you subscribe to my channel for more fun at Christmas cards this Christmas season. Hope you guys have an absolutely awesome rest of your day and I will catch you again in my next video. Sending lots of huggles! <laughs>